What's going on everybody? I'm YouTube's ProPJ and welcome back to This Is The Police. Um, we are heading into day six, if my memory serves me right. Six, six or seven. Um, let's read some headlines. Thomas Blaine, pregnant woman killer, sent to the mental hospital. According to Dr. Eleanor Waterbury, Thomas Blaine has a new form of schizophrenia. Mayor Rogers, not afraid of the competition. Okay, I am, am interested to see how this goes now that they made that decision to kind of work with the fucking mob. Or the mafia. I'm sorry, not the mob. The mafia. Mr. Same Boyd, shit, different there was spell. A man here earlier. <clears throat> he left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on okay. his floor? I don't know. I've never seen him what before. Man? I asked him his name, I like but he his just voice. ignored me. It's like he the best voice. I like it. I fucking you know, love it. It's great. He gave me this envelope and left. Damn. Okay, let's see. Oh, one this. of those brick phones. One of those big fucking brick phones. Ah, oh, he he of left. Course, he got they out. They could have shot them the second they took the photo. But that but means I knew I'm Kendrick in. Kendrick and his family were all right. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My service oh, exactly to the what mafia I had begun. I'd only been in my new position five uh, seconds, uh, and I already knew why Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is, a curse. Boy. Yeah, that's pretty much how Good I morning, feel about Jack. it. I believe you just received my message. Who am I Good speaking morning, with? Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no my trouble recognizing me. My name is Like I was Frank a member Kirk. of your family. Even better don't know than what a that wife, is. perhaps. <laughs> a wife can betray you. No man is immune. I don't talk to people who don't tell me their name. No, you oh. didn't. Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our own... Do you know who would be like a perfect fucking villain? Like who has a good voice for a villain? We must Richard McGonagall, who played Sully in um, so if you Uncharted. Jack, I think he has like one of the best fucking voices, Hello, man. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, what is, He would have suited Sand. this. And what is it you do for a living? Oh, it's like when you showed up in the Telltale Batman. I was like, oh, well, my God, it's Sully. You learn much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. You're a simple policeman no longer, Jack. Don't turn off the phone. You start today. Turn off your phone, Jack. Turn it off. Motherfucker. Eight in ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my okay. colleagues hush up what they what need the to, fuck? two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. Eighty out of a hundred, eight hundred out a of good a thousand. Strategy, I'm I guess. proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeberg, right? Yeah. But yeah. now I just officially became 80%. a mafia whore. I'm supposed to be fearing for my life. <laughs> the lives of my wife and children is the, the best thing I can think ever spoken in a video game. To eight I'm a ten. mafia whore. Yeah, that's gonna slide, isn't it? My father got drunk and beat my mother again. This time it looks pretty bad. I like to go to them. Can I have the day off? Oh, but you're one of my best. Nobody else gets the day off. No one else. Ooh, I don't know why I choose music. I think I turned it down way too much. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Yeah, I turned it down way too much. I, I, I keep forgetting to turn it up. Oh, here we go. What we got? Robbery. Um, after being expelled from a university, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he led... He... Blah, blah, blah. Alright, let's send, um, you and Purdy. And let's send in the SWAT just in case he has a gun. Valid way detective, there's a low chance of success. Um. Where am I? Uh. Um. 
the fuck happened to my detectives? Yep, fuck it. What the hell happened to my detectives, man? Fire all black cops. You swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep your promises, we won't keep ours. Failed. Well, f fuck you. <sighs> Not off to a good start. Um, attempted murder. A young employee at a factory got into a fight with the manager and is trying to push him into a vat of boiling chocolate. Uh, Kochi and Asano. Out you go. Kochi and Asano, you can do it. You know? Robbery. What we got? Offend the court? Awesome. That's it. That's all I needed to know. Case closed. You are able to arrest all suspects. That's how I do it. That's how I do. It's a quiet day. Too quiet. Here we go. Attempted murder report. Did you get him? You got him. Or her. Or... Yeah. Uh, carjacking. Parking lot attendant Dylan Burns reports seeing a teenager walking between cars trying handles in the hopes of finding an unlocked vehicle. Before the attendant could approach him, the teenager found an unlocked door and shot himself inside. A few seconds later, the teen drove shrieking from the parking lot. Greatly exceeding the speed limit, he fled towards the suburbs. Alright, we need the big guns on this one. We need you. Uh, we need you. And we'll send Price. I mean, Price, don't, don't be a fucking burden. Alright, which I get the feeling you will be, but I'm taking a chance on you, Price. Don't, don't fucking let me down. God damn it, Price. I mean, it's an alright day, it's not, it's not too busy. Oh, officers have determined the car theft's location. Um... Oh, no, don't open... F no. Overtake the criminal and attempt to take him into custody. Block the road. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's what we want to see. What we got? We got a hostage situation. Weeping child called in saying that someone was holding him against his will. They won't let me go outside. They torture me and bully me. I don't think I can keep going. I want to go outside and see Pete. Is this a crank call? I'll send Purdy and Austin in this one. Because I feel like it's going to be a crank call. Or it's going to be like... the kid, A kid gets grounded and he's just like... <laughs> they won't let me go outside. Fuck an asshole. That kind of thing. Or he's just mad at his parents, so he's just like, 911, you would never believe what is happening. <laughs> what we got? We received a call from an angry casino patron. He claims that one of the casino girls was hanging around his table, lifted his wallet, which was carrying a couple thousand dollars in cash and several credit cards. Casi casino security shoved him outside, saying that he was drunk. But the man isn't giving up so easily. Let's send... You and Yancey. Okay, we've got, we've got a good system. Oh. Christopher Sand, Jack. We're dealing with a moron who refuses to repay his debts. Says that the police will protect him. I think it's time we show him whose side the police are on. Oh, no. Let's send you... I don't want to. I don't want to send someone good in case like it backfires and like they get fired or something. <sighs> Hostage situation. False alarm. His mother wouldn't let him go outside and play until he ate his broccoli. Fucking told you. Um. Yeah. I don't want to risk sending someone good in case like they get fired for being associated with the mafia or some shit. So I'd rather send someone that's not so good. Theft, here we go. Offend the court. Good job. 
very good job. Uh, is that it? That's it! Oh, do I take it? Assault with a deadly weapon at a parking lot exit, a security guard stopped a suspicious looking van and asked to check the driver's membership. The female driver reached casually into the glove box and pulled out a gun and started opening fire. Okay, let's send... Let's send the shit ton of people because this is the last case. Let's do that. Because if we send four, then hopefully that will mean that uh, it'll be handled. And it's the last, last case. Fuck it. We've got a situation here. Alright. A police cruiser has caught up with the perpetrator's van. Try to run the van off the road. Use a bullhorn in order the van to stop. Shoot out the criminal's tire. Van takes a sharp turn and crashes through the window of a sex shop. Ha. <laughs> ah. A woman exits the vehicle, grabs the shop attendant, and pulls the gun to his head. Yeah, <laughs> throw a rubber sex doll! Let go of the man. That was easy. Civilians unharmed. Oh, good! Right on, team. Right on. That's how we do. Do I have to wait for them to get back and then finish? There's no finish. There's always a finish. Why is there no finish? Do I have to wait for all of them to be here? Homicide report. Detective Moore, you got three new frames. What we got? Oh, okay. Um. Jesus. Um. Hmm. Maybe that there and then that like that. I don't know. Or maybe maybe that and then that. Or that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um one of these has to fucking work. So it's the machine gun. A few muffled shots. Well, maybe it's this then. Um. Don't remember car. I never heard any shots. Um. Oh, I don't know. Could it be that? Or that? I honest to God. I don't know what it could be. I don't know, dude. Oh, I got it! Sherlock, Sherlock. Travis Haunton, a known racist who always has several, who already has several previous convictions. Should we go and arrest him? No, we'll save that for next time, because I don't... I don't want to overwork my people. Oh, I can't... Okay. Fuck it. I have to. I have to do the... Oops. Just clicked out the game. Alright, we'll send our two best cops. Okie dokie. Um, do I get, like in trouble if I keep going over time. I feel like I might. My bad. Alright, let's see how this plays out. Homicide report. Offend the court. Good job. Case closed, you were able to arrest all suspects. Yeah! That's how we do. That is how we do. Checkpoint. Beep, beep. Day seven, July twenty-first. I'm gonna try and read this in that in that kind of that deep voice. Racist gangs run wild in the city. Second tower to be built in Freeburg. Investigation into Francis Kendrick. C 
could resume. I do good? Does it get? Uh. <laughs> Alright, let's go, Jack. Let's frigging go. God, he has a bad car. He's working for the Mafia. He could probably get a better car. The people of Freeburg have um, built up happening? a tolerance for the petty horrors oh, of modern life. You'll never see crowds gathering around a right. beaten passerby. Folks rarely even slow to gawk at a car accident. Okay. And street theft doesn't turn heads anymore. Been a long time since people got worked That's up bad. about stuff like that. So when I ran into a troubled crowd on the way to That's work, bad, I dude. knew there was something serious going on. Something bad enough to knock Someone's these dead? people out of their daily rhythm. And we're talking about people who would step over someone a died? corpse if it was blocking the door to the coffee shop. Okay, so someone But apparently all it takes is a bunch of leaflets, or spreading broken oh, wow. glass across Main Street, or releasing a couple of hundred rats in the ice arena. The mysterious figure taking responsibility wow. for these strange acts goes by the alias Robespierre. Nobody knows who he is, what he Robes wants, Pierre. what all this adds up to. From the buckets Robes of lard Pierre. spread on the sidewalk to the front door of City Hall covered with ostrich feathers. But this strange cross between childhood pranks and cheap He's a theatrics guy. has or got girl. the people all worked up. Everyone understands when some Freeburg crook well, satisfies the basic human need to rob and kill. But when someone steals a lion from the local zoo and locks him in a cell below the courthouse, what the, the people fuck? start asking questions. Myself, that's I kind of like up. this Robespierre. Like, it's that's not even... just the pranks he's pulling or his green bull's head emblem. I just like his funny nickname. What's wrong with you, Jack? Who hurt you? Robespierre? Hurt you? Really? Who does that make me? The Marquis de Lantanac? Yeah, I mean, I'll give, I'll give you some credit there. So. That's a shit In the old books about revolutions, have. I fancy myself the old gunner who goes off to war with a bag of damp powder. <laughs> or maybe the innkeeper who tops up the beer kegs with mop water. Hmm. It's something to think about. Hmm. It's something to think about. <laughs> He's got the best voice. I keep saying that, but like... It's true. Martin Strett is your new deputy. Great. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> Let's play some boogie fever. B -b 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 boogie. I can kind of hear that one. Oh, hello. Gang member. Uh, Khan Yingling. Turned out to be a member of a gang known as the Red Masks. He could help you take down the gang if you make him an informant. Okay. He's there. Okay. Alright, well let's start to investigate this person. Alright. Uh, Ning He Hid, the stolen antique necklace. Alright, let's put Wolf on this. Let's have all of our guys, uh, two of our guys on this. No, fuck it all. Fuck it. We'll put all. Uh, eliminate the Red Mask Gang. Bao Lang gave several interviews in which he, she spoke about atro atrocities committed by the Red Mask Gang. She embellished a lot Wait, what? She embellished a lot and distorted the facts. If you want to keep people from panicking, you'll need to take down the gang within the next four days. Well, that's... That's kind of fucked up. Alright. A shoe store clerk reports that two teenagers found the most expensive sneakers on display, tried them on, and then without paying, ran out of the shop. Eh, petty theft. Let's send in... Smarty and... Oops. Smarty and Robbins. Petty theft. Petty theft. Alright. Hopefully, like, no detective jobs pop up, because uh, all of our detectives are slightly busy. Oh, here we go. Ninghe is a faithful assistant... Is the faithful assistant, Jing Hang. 
a former member of the gang he's entrusted with the most serious jobs. Necklace. Ning He keeps his most valuable prizes at home while he arranges their sale. He then brings them to the Wise Dragon restaurant on the day before he plans to make the deal. The gang must have must have had an immediate buyer for the necklace. So Ning He brought it to the restaurant the same night he stole it. Usually the restaurant is open around the clock, but it was closed that night before the night that night before because an important deal was going down. Ning He has a key to the restaurant. Valuables are kept in the safe in the bar. Alright, well you guys get back to me when you've got some some more uh some more thingy duties. It's a quiet day. God damn it. The teens are standing around, smirking not far from the store, admiring the new shoes. Time to return those shoes. <laughs> that was easy. What we got? Uh, attempted murder. A man returned from work earlier than usual and found his young wife in bed with her lover. The maid called the police when she saw the husband taking a hunting rifle from the wall cabinet. Uh, yeah, I need to file on this. Um, and I'll take Grant and Birch as well. Because at least we've got two here and two of them are about to come back. So, I'm trying to even it out as best I can. City Hall. Today in Freeburg, we're hosting the premiere of Back to the Future. Films distributors have asked the cities for an officer for an officer stand at the door and ensure that visitors don't bring in handheld cameras to the theater. Yeah, Roy. You can go to that. Why not? What else is Roy going to do? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Oh, attempted murder. Here we go. Offend the court, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. That's what we want to see. Good job, all of you. You, 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 you. Good job. Uh, what happened to the other case? Freeburg Elementary School. A young father, deprived of his parental rights, tried to pick up his daughter from the school. When he wasn't allowed access, he attacked a teacher, knocked her to the ground, and started kicking her. You don't, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? No! You, you fucking idiot. What we got? Mr. Boyd. I have a very sensitive issue, which our mutual friend, Charles Dill, said you could help me with. As you may already know, I own the largest music store in Freeburg. Recently, my ex-wife got half my record collection in a lawsuit. There's a lot of rare records. My ex is very afraid of the police and always tries to act like a law-abiding citizen. If some of your guys went over there in uniform and took those rec and told her the records were evidence to an important investigation, she'd just smile and give them whatever they asked for, not even checking for a warrant. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that, dude. I can't. I'm sorry. I'll think about it. Mafia assignment. Jack. We have something going down today at engineering plant at 10.09. We wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think $4,000 should be enough for such a request. Ooh. Um. I'll send Birch and Grant to this, maybe. Do I really have to send three? Alright, fuck it, I'll do it. I wanna help. Shit. Disorderly conduct. The guard says that someone got into the exhibition or uh, scrolled pictures of penises on the artwork and hid in the closet. Eh. Stavall should be able to handle that. The assault. Here we go. Offender court, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good. Good work. Gentlemen. I can't believe that dude. It's the fucking teacher. I, is it? 
Chief. We helped Ulrich Bieber, and thanks to us, he gave us an album, The Master. True Birch prefers glam, so he was really sad. At the bar, bud, time shift ended. What? Thanks for your help, Boyd. Aww. That brings a tear to my eye. Here. So nice. Alright. All the lights are on when the police arrive. The museum's caretaker explains that he's only had a job a couple weeks, and he's worried he's going to get fired over this foolishness. The police calm him down, and he points out the bathroom stall that the artist locked himself in. Uh, come out with your hands up. A terrified and tearful young man holding a knife insists that, that he's engaged in some kind of performance art and that no one understands him. He refuses to surrender and threatens to, threatening to stab himself. Uh, tell me more about your work. <laughs> See, he's a good cop, Stavall. I like Stavall. Good cop. Alright, so something's happening at uh, 10 o'clock that I'm not meant to that I'm not meant to go and uh, do anything about. Ooh, do I betray the Mafia? Do I be like, fuck you, I ain't no Mafia, bitch? Or do I stay true to my word? It's hard to know. Yep, a theft at the engineering plant. He was received coal from the groundskeeper at the machine factory. He spotted two offenders stealing aluminum from a factory through a hole in the wall. Alright, we'll leave this one. We'll leave this one. I mean, it's helping my, my police budget at least. Receive stolen property. Detective Wolf, here we go. What did we get, dude? Are they in order already? Hey, there we go. Chinese immigrant hasn't officially worked anywhere for the past 10 years. Uh, okay. Let's send two cops and some SWAT with him, because he's a bit dangerous. You know, he's, he's a bit dangerous. Thank you for doing as we asked. Here's the amount we agreed. Offender escaped. Hey, you miss one every now and then. What of it? Psychological test. Jack, you must have, be, you must have seen the newspaper story about Thomas Blaine. The retired cop who went schizophrenic had shot a pregnant woman. To ensure this tragedy doesn't repeat itself, we decided to conduct psychological testing for the cops over 50 years of age. That includes you, Jack. Tomorrow morning, Dr. Eleanor Waterbury is waiting for you in her office. Don't be late. Oh, fuck you! Thank you, but fuck you! Alright. How did we do? Did we get this motherfucker? I mean, we sent SWAT with them. So, if we don't get him, what the hell? Offender court. Awesome. SWAT were just there to... SWAT were just there to kind of, uh... Back everybody up just in case shit went south. Ooh, do I arrest him? Let's arrest him. Gee. Yeah. Jack, you swore an oath to serve the city. If you're not going to keep your promise, we won't keep ours. Oh, I should have kept going. Whoops. I figured, like, yeah, arrest him. Take him out of the equation, and then we'll go up to the next guy. Whoops. I didn't know. Shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't think I'm smart. Day eight. All right. Well, I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope you guys are still enjoying this. This is so much fun to come back to. I'm sorry that there's been a bit of a gap between it, but I did want to leave just a tiny bit of a gap. 
uh, just so it doesn't get too repetitive because it's the same thing kind of over and over again. I mean, new scenarios and like the story's progressing, but you know what I mean. It, it does get a little bit repetitive after a while, so I just wanted to give it a little bit of a breathing room so we did get sick of it. Um, but I'm still loving this, and I hope you guys are too. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to favorite it. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already, guys. Helps me out a lot. There are links to my social medias in the description box. And as always, there's a link to the Proper Game merch store down below. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, I'm YouTube's Proper JN. Peace out. Beyond your trembling skin, beyond your wayward feet, and every solemn promise that you swore you would keep when you saw yourself.